good evening to all uh, i hope my screen is visible to all and you all can hear me uh, please drop yes in the chat box if you can hear me yes guys please type yes in the chat box if you can see my screen and i am audible to all okay okay thanks for the confirmation uh, okay so guys we'll start in few minutes uh, we are expecting more participants to join this live uh, let them join and we'll start the webinar in few minutes uh, till the time uh, we will be mentioning the social media platform links in the chat box for you all so make sure you go and follow us on our social media platforms also we have meetup communities on which we do provide the relevant updates on the upcoming webinars and workshop so you can follow us over there too links are in the uh, q a section so go and check out the links if you want to follow you can go and follow us on the social media platforms Uh, participants are requested to note that we are expecting few more participants to join this live and we'll start with the webinar. Uh, we'll wait for more four or five minutes and we'll start the webinar. Also, we have shared the social media platform links as well as the community links and other details in the chat box for you all.
guys till the time we are starting up with the webinar you all can go and get your batch activated for ai 050 uh, which was shared uh, in yesterday's webinar also uh, those who don't know about this batch i will make you all understand again that this batch contain the study material and the modules related to the topics in the gen ai which we have covered all the concepts and topic related to the gen ai uh, it has been mentioned in this uh, batch, so make sure you get this batch activated. I will share the link for you all again with the steps in the chat box, so you all can go follow the steps and get the batch activated before we start the webinar. Uh, yes, guys, I have shared the steps and the URL for the badge in the chat box. Uh, go follow the steps and get your badge activated. Uh, it's a simple process. Uh, just you have to create a Microsoft Learn account. If you have one, it is well and good. Uh, you just have to simply click on the URL which has been mentioned below the steps and get the badge activated. I repeat the badge content study material. Uh, for study material and overview for this topic. So get your batch activated before we start with the webinar. Uh, guys, all the uh, queries related to the batch, I will explain you how to get this batch activated and all in a break time. Don't worry, I will make you all understand how to get the study material, how to get the batch activated. Till the time you can do one thing, you can create your Microsoft Learn account. You just have to click on Microsoft Learn. Click on the first link which you will get and create your account.
Uh, let's get started with the webinar now uh, without a further ado. Uh, good evening, guys. Myself, Chaita Ali. I will be the host for this webinar. Uh, as we are into day three of the Gen AI, uh, we will be experiencing practical application of generative AI in business today. Also, my team uh, and our speaker will be there to help you out with your queries and questions. You can drop your queries, questions related to the topic in the chat box. Then talking about the today's event uh, sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Uh, Synergetics do believe in delivering trainings to solve the customer's pain point uh, by crafting the cutting edge uh, learning solutions. Uh, we have different kind of solutions on which we do provide trainings. We have persona based onboarding training. Then we have onboarding add on training certification solution. Then we have certification add on solution. Then we have reskilling emerging technology training. Uh, then we have certification hackathon solution cloud adoption, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution. Then we have practice playbook and architecting solutions. Then how you can uh, get complete learning experience with Synergetics. It will give you uh, it will give you a complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get uh, recognized. Then as I have mentioned earlier, there are three types of uh, certifications. First is fundamental, then we have advanced role based certification and expert level of certification. In fundamental certification, Synergetics do provide trainings on AZ900, which is Azure Fundamental. Then we have AI900, Azure AI Fundamental. Then DP900, Azure Data Fundamental. Then we have PL900, Power Platform Fundamental, and SC900, Security Compliance and Identity Fundamental. Then in advanced role based certification, that is the associate level of certification. We do provide training on AZ104, AZ204. Then we have AI102, DP203. Also we have PL series as well as SC series. And in expert level, we have AZ305, SC100, PL600 and AZ400. Uh, those who are interested to get uh, certified in any of the certification do connect with us. Uh, details are there in the chat box for you all. Then what certification offers? Uh, so certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand in knowledge and skills. Uh, we also do provide certification add-ons, onboarding add-on like short duration modules. Then today's webinar is organized and handled by ATC community, that is Azure Tech community. Uh, this ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies. Under this uh, ATC community, we have different kind of communities like emerging technology community for all. Then we have Azure Tech community Pune for Pune Kurs. Emerging technology community Surat for Surat Tech. And we have Azure Tech community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs. Uh, you, you just have to simply uh, install the Meetup app on your phone or on your device to get this community's follow. Uh, the links for this community will be mentioned in the chat box for you all. You all can go and follow us over there to get the updates on the upcoming workshops, webinars, and events. Then you have to follow the code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all. Uh, please note participants are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording while a uh, speaker is sharing his screen. 
Then we have Mr. Sonu Satyadas with us today. He is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as a practice head. Uh, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, he has 12 plus years of experience in training and development in various uh, Microsoft as well as open source technologies. Also, he will be giving a practical experience of generative AI application uh, in today's webinar. Then the agenda of this webinar. will explore more about the generative AI application and how it will enhance the creativity. Uh, as I mentioned in yesterday's webinar that this complimentary batch which we are providing to you all is related to the topics and the concept taught in this Gen AI series. So please note uh, we will be sharing the complimentary learning achievement batch uh, for AI 900 uh, which is Microsoft Azure AI fundamental. Then we, we have shared AI 102 which is designing and implementing Microsoft Azure AI solution and in yesterday's webinar we have posted AI 050 that is develop develop generative AI solution with Azure open AI uh, services. You have to get three of the batch activated for this Gen AI series. Uh, AI 900 and AI 102 is for fundamental and basic level and AI 050 is for advanced level. So you have to get three of them activated so you, you can go and revise through that. The study material is available in this batch itself. Also those who are attending today's webinar, uh, those who have don't don't have any idea regarding the batch, how to get this batch activated and all. I will make sure uh, you will get this batch activated. I will try to explain you all in the break time how to get this batch activated, how you can share this batch on your uh, social media pro profiles like LinkedIn, Facebook and all. Then moving ahead, we have uh, one last topic in Gen AI series, which is tomorrow, which is on uh, 22nd tomorrow, same time 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, topic will be generative AI with Azure Open AI service and beyond. The registrations are still open to all. If you are interested and have not yet registered, please go and register yourself for the same. The registration link will be mentioned in the chat box for you all. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms uh, for relevant updates on upcoming webinars, workshops, certification trainings which Synergetics provide. Links for all the social media platforms has been already mentioned for you all in the chat box. Thank you all for listening to me. Now I would like to, my, like to pass the mic to the speaker so he can go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chaitali. <coughs> I'm sharing my screen. Please confirm whether you are able to see this. Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. So today is the day three of our webinar series. And today we are going to talk about the practical uh, implementations of uh, generative AI in our uh, business applications. In yesterday's session, we had discussed about the generative AI and the various uh, models we can use for building the generative AIs and the Azure, sorry, the open AI and the different uh, open AI models and we also see some of the uh, we also saw some of the uh, examples how we can invoke these uh, open AI models. And today we are mainly focusing on uh, how we can use this generative AI in our business applications and its use cases. Myself Sonu, Sonu Satyadas. I am working with Synergetic from last uh, 
eight plus years and I have total 15 plus years of experience in training and development. Working with uh, major technologies like .NET, Java, open source uh, technologies, Python, and uh, on the cloud platforms. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, completed certifications on Azure administration, Azure architecting, Azure development, and the AI engineering. So going ahead, today we are looking at uh, the generative AI and its methods, the large language models, the applications of generative AI, the types of the large language models we use and retrieval augmented generation and how it is beneficial for organizations to build applications and generative AI in business applications and use cases of generative AI. And finally, we will be ending up with the risk and limitations of generative AI systems. Just to give the context of today's session. We are talking about the generative AI, which is part of the artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? It's uh, one of the most commonly used uh, term nowadays and one of the most trending technology nowadays. We are using applications and services in our day to day life that can automate. Most of our task. Or it can generate some informations for us. With few queries. All these possible because of the artificial intelligence, so artificial intelligence means. An application or a service or a tool that is going to mimic the human capabilities. Usually, we people are capable to uh, innovate things, build new uh, new things, and imagine uh, and create the uh, objects and. Uh, ideas. Artificial intelligence is also a kind of uh, 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 method that brings the capabilities of uh, human into the machines, which means the machines can now start think like a human and it can proactively do things. It can generate new contents. It can automate a lot of things for the users. If you talk about the artificial intelligence, it's a comes from the uh, background of data science and analytics because we need a large set of data to analyze this. And organizations will have uh, historical data related to the events. And uh, the applications that they use. All these informations can be used to train the machine learning models and build artificial intelligence models so that the artificial intelligence models can predict or generate new things. These AI systems are mainly classified into three, or you can simply say that there are three types of uh, AI systems, which is artificial narrow intelligence, artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence. We have already discussed about these types in the yesterday's session. But yes, uh, uh, to brief, artificial narrow intelligence uh, simply means the artificial intelligence that we use in uh, devices and applications for completing specific task. For example, Amazon Alexa or Microsoft Cortana or the smart applications like uh, chatbots or the 
uh, smart services that we use in our day-to-day uh, -day applications like uh, generating the emails, uh, correcting the grammatical things, there are a lot of or doing the translations. So all these are examples of artificial narrow intelligence because they are designed to perform some specific task and they are capable to proactively uh, implement those things. But when it comes to artificial general intelligence, which is a kind of artificial intelligence models that can think like humans, that can mimic the capabilities of humans, like it can uh, generate uh, new objects or new uh, materials or elements like uh, text contents or images or audios and videos because it is capable to generate stories, blogs, poems, images, animations and so on. But artificial super intelligence is yet to invent and it's a concept that says artificial intelligence models that surpass the human capabilities. So you can see this in Hollywood movies that machines are thinking like humans or beyond humans and they can do a lot of things. Today in this session, we are going to discuss about the artificial general intelligence and a category of this that is generative AI and its implementations in various industries and domains and how we can use them in our applications. Generative AI compared to the traditional AI we can say it is a kind of uh, machine learning model or deep learning models that can generate new and original contents such as text contents or images, video, audio or even application code. So can you imagine that a machine can code itself? because we are coding the machines, we are creating the artificial intelligence models by writing the code and the models can now write the code itself, right? So that is an interesting thing. So generative AI models are typically used to generate new contents in, that is useful in various domains. And we will, going forward, we will discuss about that. And these generative AI models are uh, driven by the deep learning algorithms or deep learning models that has uh, multiple layers of neural networks. And these Deep learning models are trained with a large data set which is available in internet. And these models can generate new things based on the data that is used to train those models. Some of the models or generative AI methods that we use to build the large language models or generative AI models are GAN, transformers, variational autoencoders and diffusion models. And there are many more, but yes, uh, these are some of the uh, uh, models or methods that we use to build the large language models. 
the generative adversarial networks or simply can uh, we can call it as gan consist of two neural networks one is a generator and the other one is a discriminator and the generator is used to generate a new uh, content and the discriminator is used to discriminate or identify whether that object is fake or uh, real because there are lots of data that we have used to train those models and it's the responsibility of the discriminator to understand whether it is generating the real data that is uh, used for the training or it uh, creates a new content which is uh, fake. But this variational autoencoders, they use the input and create the uh, probabilities into a latent vector and this and decoder is using this data from the latent vector to generate new data. Transformers are another kind of uh, models that we use in mostly in the <coughs> natural language processing models like GPTs or BERT, which uses uh, multiple neural networks for encoding and decoding. And they are processing this input text uh, sequence to sequence and applying weight for this tokens that is uh, extracted and then using positional encoding they arrange the positions or they place the elements in the correct order for generating the results. Transformer models are mainly used in NLP models like a GPT where it is used for processing text kind of inputs and it is mainly used in text uh, translations, text generations and code generations. Diffusion models are primarily uh, using uh, two encoders and it uh, and the encoders duty is to take a sample data or sample image and add a uh, spurges into that suppose if you are if it is taking an image and adding spurges into this and making it non recognizable means it is adding noise to the original content and making it non recognizable. So the content can be an image or audio or some other kind of uh, data. By adding the noise to that, it becomes unrecognizable. And the decoder's duty is to do the reverse process that is denoising the data and generating the correct data or the original data from that means the encoder is going to add uh, noises to the data and making it not recognizable and the decoder is going to denoise the data and generate the original information or retrieve the original data this is how it would get trained so that it comes to know how to denoise the data which is received and how to generate original data from those uh, input data because here the input data can be a 
non recognizable format or non recognizable data because it is trained to denoise the things it will denoise those data by removing the noise from the data and then recovering the actual data so these are some of the models that we are using for building the large language models and there are many large language models available based on gan transformers variational auto encoders diffusion models and so on large language models are typically machine learning models or ai algorithms you can say that is trained with millions of data and they once it is trained they will have set of parameters which can be used to generate new data so parameters we use in two context if you are a developer in ai you you can use the parameters to control the behavior of the model suppose if you are an open ai user there are some set of parameters like a temperature which can be used to control the randomness of the model or randomness of the output generated by the model but this parameter what we are referring here is the parameters of the models that it learned from the trained data set when the number of parameters increases it uh, increases the performance or it improve the performance of those machine learning models so that it can accurately generate results if you see gpt4 which is one of the large language model from open ai that uses around 1.76 trillion parameters which means it has a very large set of parameters so so that it can generate the responses or results very accurately than any other uh, generative ai models because these parameters are extracted from the data which is used to train those models we are using different kinds of large language models like uh, gpt gpt3 or 3.5 or gpt4 or even google's gemini or bert and there are many other and all these models are pre trained with large set of data so if you see for example if if you consider the gpt 3.5 which is released in 2021 so it is trained with the data available till date that means available till 2021 so one of the limitation that you can see in such type of models that if you go and ask the model about some new incidents it will not be able to answer because the model is not capable to extract informations which is not part of the trained data so that you can say as a limitation of the pre trained large language models because all these large language models are uh, trained with a large set of data which is available till that date so that it can produce informations or it can produce responses only based on that data 
so later we will see how we can overcome this challenge in our large language models and i can also show you an example how we'll do that so we can use this large language models to perform different type of operations including text generations image generations video and audio generations as an example you can see here i can tell the model to write a poem for me or i can tell the model to write a story for me but yes it is very important that how you query the models because these models are expecting some clear instructions so that it can generate the results accurately so the instructions or the request that we are making to the model we call as prompt so if the prompt is not clear and specific the model may not be able to understand it correctly and generate responses as you expect so it is very very important for us to learn how to uh, create the prompt or how to query this models using prompt and this is called the prompt engineering which we are not covering here because prompt engineering is an art or a technique that how to build the prompt effectively so that the large language models can go and generate the results accurately if you ask a large language model to process the given data but you are not mentioning clearly what has to be processed or how to process the data it is just a use its logic to process that information and produces the response for example if i have to create a set of questions mcq questions and i am saying the model i want to generate a set of uh 20 mcq questions means multiple choice questions i want to generate and i am also mentioning i want to generate the questions from the ai topic so the model will go and generate 20 mcq questions from the ai topic but what i am expecting is the 20 questions has to come from the azure open ai topic because i have not mentioned it correctly the model assumes that he is expecting the mcq questions from the general open ai sorry general artificial intelligence so it will go and uh, create the questions based on the general artificial intelligence but i was expecting the questions for the azure open ai so i need to clearly mention in the prompt generate 20 mcq questions and answers from or covering the azure open ai topics so that the model is capable to go and generate the questions from the azure open ai but if the user is expecting the questions uh to go into different categories like uh, i want to generate maybe uh, seven easy questions seven uh, or 10 medium level questions and uh, three or four uh, difficult questions you can even mention that in the prompt saying that i want to generate 20 mcq questions from the azure open ai uh, topic and create seven easy questions 10 difficult questions and three difficult sorry three medium level 10 medium level questions 
and the three hard level questions. So because I have given the instructions correctly, the model will be able to go and generate 20 questions. So that's what we are learning about the prompt engineering. So whenever you work with large language models like a GPT, it is important to understand how to build the prompt. Large language models like chat GPT, it does not understand what you write. It just uh, simply take and the input and the machine learning models that is used inside this GPT process that text or input and then understand the context and the meaning of that particular statement and then generating the response for you. It uses some statistical calculations for identifying the relationship between the text elements and then it is evaluating what the user is expecting as the response and then it is generating the results. If you see the large language models are not new. There are many large language models available now and you can also see they have been created very long back. At the initial large language model introduced in 1966, but after that there are lots of new large language models introduced. You can see in 2017 transformer models models has been introduced. 2018 BERT introduced. 2019 GPT-2 introduced and 2020 they have introduced a GPT-3 and after that uh, lots of improvement and you can see the progress of uh, artificial intelligence models and different organizations has released a different generative AI or large language models uh, over many years. You can see in 2023, Google has released Google Bard and Llama. And in December 2022, GPT 3.5 has been released. And the recent update you can see from OpenAI, which is one of the uh, largest and popular uh, generative AI model development company. It is a, a American research laboratory who build the generative models for users. So their latest model GPT-4 is introduced in 2023. So even after that also lots of new models introduced and some of them are still in preview or they are keep updating the data. If you see the large language models, we can categorize into three. Or you can say there are three types. One is pre trained models, another one is fine tuned models, and the other one is multi model model. What is mean by this pre trained models? Pre trained models means they are already trained with millions or trillions of data available in internet and you are just allowed to go and consume these models which means you have to consume these models in your applications as it is available 
since it is pre-trained with the data available, it, you will not be able to go and update the data which is available there because it's already pre-trained with the, uh, the available data set. But in organizations, we cannot use this pre-trained models as it is because they may need to make some changes in the organize uh, in sorry in the uh, models behavior models response and the backend data so what they can do they can do fine tuning to certain models and then publish them as service so not all the large language models or generative models supports fine tuning so what is fine tuning fine tuning is the process of retraining the models with a new set of data or uh, some with some updations so when you do the fine tuning you are actually creating a new model which which is derived from a pre-trained model Multi-model model is another category of the large language model, which is capable to accept different types of input or their combinations. For example, if you consider the DAL-E, which is an image generation tool, it is capable to generate new images based on the prompt given by the user so here it is using a text prompt for uh, generating the images but it is also possible that you can use this dal e model to edit the images so in that case you are providing the image and also you specify a text instruction saying that i want to replace the XY object with a, a different one. So which means you are using two different types of input to the model. So that means an image, an existing image is uploaded. And also you are giving some text instruction saying that from the given image, remove the object. Maybe you have to remove the background of the image or you want to add some extra in objects in into this image so you can say there are different types of uh, large language models available one is pre-trained second is fine-tuned and the third one is multi-model type and you can see the uh, names of models that comes in this categories, but it's quite older. But yes, uh, even new models mostly developed as multi-model types like the GPT, which support multiple input types. Where we are using this large language models or generative AI models. We use this generative AI models in various applications that is in different domains or different organizations. We can use it in creative industries for generating new art forms, music compositions and new design ideas. If you are a person from the marketing background and you want to generate the marketing's logo or title or marketing content, background, something, you can use generative AI because they are capable to build new things for you 
So if you ask the model to create a logo, it will generate a logo for you. Or if you ask the model to create a tagline for the campaign, it will do for do that for you. Or you can create the product description. It will do that for you. Even in music compositions, we can use generative AI. Because nowadays what happens if you are watching the movies like animation movies, the background music, the movie characters, animation characters, voice, all will be manually created, which means the background music is manually created and the voice of the animation characters are uh, uh, dubbed by the movie actors or some other people. But instead of that, you can use computer generated audio as backgrounds. So for background score, you can use the computer generated audio or you can use it for the characters means you can write the script of the character and using a text to speech engine you will be able to go and uh, create the uh, audio you can even personalize the content and tailor experiences for individual users so personalized uh, recommendations, suggestions can be created with generative AI. Product development. So if you are into the app development, we need to build and test the applications and products before moving this into production, right? So we have to generate some prototypes and then test these prototypes before before building the actual uh, object or you want to test the existing products and services with the data for validating the performance and accuracy before moving them into the production so we can use generative ai to uh, create synthetic data for testing. You can use it for generating the prototype of the objects so that we can use them in the testing environment before moving them into the production. Generate realistic images and videos for marketing and advertising. So if you see, for marketing campaigns, we have to prepare the brochure or maybe the banners where we have to show some pictures. Maybe a, if it is a, a laptop's advertisement, we have to create a banner which shows a person is sitting and using the laptop. But if you are uh, using or manually creating a photo or manually taking a photo using the cam you need a person you can call it him as a model who sits with the laptop and you take the photo and then you can use that photo for the advertising campaigns or marketing campaigns but with the help of ai you can generate realistic images but it will be completely uh, new and unique, which means you can generate an image of a person sits with a laptop. But there is no person exist in the world with that face. Because it is a completely a computer generated image. So that is one use case I can say uh, uh, how the generative AI helps in the marketing and sales campaigns we can use 
the generative ai in science and research areas where we can discover new molecules and materials to accelerate the drug discovery means new medicines are invented by combining different molecules and elements so how they react or how they uh, work you can check with the help of generative ai models and even you can use it for identifying the patient's uh, response like uh, if i inject this medicine in a particular patient's body how it is going to react because he is already maybe a diabetic person or a person with a higher bp or maybe some other diseases so for such a person what will happen if i inject this medicine so before injecting you can ask the generative ai model or you can use generative ai model to get a, a response or result saying that how this medicine is going to react in that particular person's body because the model is already trained with hundreds of or thousands of patients data with the similar conditions so from that it will be able to recognize how it is going to react in that person's or patient's body retrieval augmented generation or rag which is very very important while using the generative models in today's business applications and why because as i have mentioned these generative ai models creating the responses based on the data used in the training time so maybe the model is trained and generated some years back so the problem is the model data may be years or months or or weeks out of date and uh, when you ask a question or when you ask the model to give a response on a particular thing it may not be able to give an accurate result for example if you are asking the model what is the market trend and which of the uh, uh, products and services are trending in the market the model is going to give you an answer but the problem is model is trained maybe couple of years back maybe 2 year 3 year or 4 years back and whenever you ask the model to uh, generate the list of so, uh, services or technologies that is trending in the market it will go and list the informations which is available during the training that is in 3 uh, years or 4 years back data which means the result which is generated by the model is not current and up to date so it leads to incorrect responses and we cannot use this incorrect responses for our uh, other activities so then what is a solution because the, these models are already trained with lot of data but we know that these data is outdated so the solution is rag what is this rag rag provides a way to optimize the output of a large language model with a targeted information without modifying the underlying model itself so we can get the informations from the latest data without retraining the model or without modifying this model we are able to go and update the model because the model is going to refer 
some new data before producing the response. The targeted information can be more up to date than the LLM as well as specific to a particular organization or industry. So the information that we are going to use <laughs> will be an up to date information compared to the data which is used in the LLM during the training. So that when you can make requests to the models and the model is capable to go and generate the responses with a higher accuracy. This is mostly used in organizations because uh, uh, large language models which are pre-trained can produce only uh, some generic informations. It cannot go and give informations about the organizations or organizations culture, organizations policies or organizations other events. But if you want the model to respond with the organization specific information, then you have to use the retrieval augmented generation method. RAG is relatively a new artificial intelligence technique that can improve the quality of the generative AI by allowing the large language model to tap additional data resources without retraining, which means what is the ground text or grounding information we are using for large language models? They are the pre-trained data, but now we can provide some grounding informations to the large language models without retraining those models, which means while making the queries, we can tell the large language models to go and refer the new information which is provided. That is the grounding information. RAG models build knowledge repositories based on the organization's own data and the repositories can be continually updated to help the generative AI provide timely contextual answers. So what is the benefit of using this approach? Organizations can use their own data as a grounding information so that the model can refer those information and generate the responses which is up to date and it is context relevant. Chatbots and other conversational systems that use the natural language processing can benefit greatly from RAG and generative AI. So mostly the customer support uh, applications which uses chatbot kind of virtual agents, they can make use of this RAG because whenever the customer asks the virtual assistant or a chatbot, so what are the new production services you have? So if the chatbot is using the pre-trained generative AI model, it will give you the answer with the older data. But if the model is uh, trained or, or, or the model is using the RAG for providing a uh, grounding text or grounding information, uh, which is an up-to-date information so that the uh, chatbot can go and refer the uh, new information and respond correctly. So because whenever the customer is asking what are the new products and services you have, so it will go and refer the uh, grounding information and extract the, those informations and provide. So any organizations who wants to use generative AI in their virtual assistants like a chatbots, it's a recommendation 
to use the RAG to uh, provide the, the the grounding information for the models. Otherwise, the model will be able to provide some older out of date data. Implementing the RAG requires technologies such as vector databases, which allows for the rapid coding of new data and searches against the data to feed into the LLM. So it requires a search service and vector databases or similar data set which can store the data. And it is the responsibility of the search service to do a search and extract the relevant information and provide. So here I can show you an example of the uh, RIG that how the Azure Open AI can use a custom data to provide up to date information or the organization specific information. So consider that I am building a chatbot or I am building a virtual assistant that is providing information about a travel agency. So there is a uh, conceptual organization called a Margis Travel Agency. So Margis Travel Agency is a conceptual organization which can provide information about the hotels, travel bookings, and many other things. So any information related to uh, hotels, which is available in different uh, cities, or the travel arrangements can be made by the travel uh, or the, the agency. So they are planning to use a large language model in their virtual assistant so that whenever the customer ask something about the uh, travel plans or hotels or cities they can provide the support by referring the organization's data which means what are the different uh, destinations the travel agency provides for tourists they can provide the information to the customers about those uh, uh, destinations. But the problem what we are facing currently is they are using a GPT model to provide the responses, means to generate the responses. But we know that GPT models are pre trained models, they are already trained with some old data so when I'm, whenever i ask some information about a travel destination it can give a generic answer not specific to the travel agency or not specific to the organization because what are the different travel destinations they operate or they provide we need to get the information about only that if i'm asking something uh, different then it's okay but if i'm asking like how or what are the different hotels available in new york so margis travel agency providing different uh, uh, hotels information so that the customers can book the hotels uh, provided by margis but if i'm simply asking the generative model so what are the different uh, hotels available in New York? It will just give a generic answer. Maybe a list of hotels names will be coming, which is which may not be used or which may not be operated by Margis Travel Agency. Right. So let's see that in action. For that, what I'm going to do, I'll just create everything from scratch. So here I'm creating a resource group first. So I'm using the 
Azure Cloud OpenAI service because that is very easy to demonstrate than any other models. So inside this resource group, first of all, I'm creating an open AI service. So I can say open AI. And this is the Azure open AI service. I'm creating a new open AI resource inside the sample group. So I can use okay, East US location is fine. So I have given the name of the open AI instance as sample open AI 201 and just giving a pricing tier as S0 and just leaving all the other fields as default. So it's creating an Azure open AI. Yeah, here we can see the instance of the OpenAI is created. Now I can go to the Azure OpenAI Studio. So here, the first thing we have to do is deploying a new model because if i have to use any of the open ai models first we have to do a deployment so i'm just doing a deployment here let's go to deployments and deploy a model so what are the different models available in east us we have these models available so i'm selecting the gpt 35 turbo 16k and giving the name of the deployment as same. Same. So I'm going to deploy an instance of the GPT-35 Turbo 16K model. And this is the name of the deployment. I'm giving the same name to identify easily and creating it. Now you can see it is creating an instance or creating a deployment of the 16k model and now i can go to the chat section here you can see i am using this deployed model so this is the model which i have deployed and i am asking this chat assistant Can you help me with the hotels in New York? So I want to get the list of hotels available in New York. So assume that this is a virtual assistant or chat assistant provided by the Margis travel agency. So you can assume that you are chatting with the Margis uh, app, uh, travel agency application and there is a virtual assistant. So now if you ask you can see uh, it just respond with some other question. What specific information you are looking for? So I can ask provide the list of hotels available in New York. 
you can see it's just giving some informations like this so this is just uh, some list of hotels in new york so this is the general information that the model is providing but understand these hotels are not operated by uh, margis travel or they don't have an association with this so what i want to do is i want to uh, tell the model whenever the customer ask about the uh, hotels in new york or dubai or some other location provide some specific information because uh, uh, this organization is going to operate in specific regions or specific locations only and in 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 each region or each location some specific hotels they are uh, tied up so give the informations about those hotels right so for that i can use the concept of add your data you can see this is still in preview but you can use this feature you can go to this and you can add a data source here data source means you can provide the information about the hotels offered by margis travel so you can go and add the data source and you can say that the grounding information will come from any one of this uh, location so either i can uh, get it from the azure ai search or blob storage cosmos db or some website urls or i can upload the files that contains the information about those hotels so if you see i have some set of files here which contains information about the hotels in different cities you can see this is margis travel presents new york and you can see the new york hotels list manhattan grand central park hotel and so on and also in san francisco there is another set of hotels they offers if you go to dubai there is another set of hotels creek dera lost city and something so you can see they are having a set of a uh, pdf files which describe the uh, list of hotels provided by margis travel right so what we are going to do we use this documents as the grounding information so that means when somebody asks hotels about uh, hotels in san francisco it has to give inf information about these hotels only because margis travel is operating in san francisco with this hotel solely okay so they provide offers accommodation in san francisco with this hotels so what we can do we can provide this files as the grounding information so i can use the upload files option for Uh, uploading the available pdf files but yes uh, because it is uh, a set of pdf files the large language model cannot go and read that informations directly because it's a pdf file so what we have to do first of all we have to upload this files into a publicly accessible place second using some search service or data mining service we have to extract the informations from those pdf files then only we will be able to provide information related to that locations or hotels because these informations are in pdf using some service we have to extract the informations from the pdf and we have to store this files into some storage so for that we use two different services as you can see we can use a blob storage service and a azure ai search service so the blob storage service is used to store the files and the 
information and the search service is used to extract information from those pdfs means it's actually a data mining service so i have already created one storage as you can see this is an storage service or if you want you can create a new storage service also like by clicking here you can create a new storage service so let's quickly create this in the same group itself i'm giving the name of the storage account as sample open ai storage 2023 something like that is that available yes so location east to us itself i am selecting and the storage redundancy i am selecting as locally redundant storage and i am leaving everything as it is and create it so i am creating a storage account at the same time i also need a search service i already have a search service but i don't want to use that i'll create a new search service so let me go and create a new search service for that i'm selecting the same resource group and the search service name i can say sample open ai search and location i'm selecting east to us the same location and the pricing tier i'll go with the basic one it's fine so i am now creating the search service also so you can see i am now creating the storage account yes you can see the storage account is created and here is the search service and it is still creating yes you can see the search service is also created i can go back to this section and i can refresh to get the list updated and i can choose the sample open ai storage as the storage and i have to enable the course policy for accessing the data click on this to enable the course that's enabled and from here i have to select the search service rabun the search is not yet created Yeah, it's created. And why it is not listing here? Okay. Now you can see here the search service is also listed here. I'm selecting that, and then I have to specify the index, search index. so you can give any name for the search index i am giving the name as margis hotels index and i'll say i acknowledge that connecting to the ai search account will incur usage to my account because it's a chargeable service and now i can upload my files like even pdf files supported i can upload this so these are the pdf files i have i can select all these and then upload you can see now it is uploaded click next and search type is keyword based search i can select next and i can save and close you can see here the ingestion in progress which means it is indexing the data 
by analyzing the PDF. It may take some time, maybe a five minutes to complete this process. And the index name will appear here. So you can see it is still processing that files. It may take a minute or two to complete this. Since it is only six files, it will complete quickly. And if these files does not contain lots of information, only one or two pages information, OK, the pre-processing is completed for all the files. OK, you can see the index is created and you can see the index name here. Now, if you see when I click on this advanced, it is selected here, this checkbox that limit responses to your data content. That means whenever I make a request, it will go and check the uh, results or it will go and search this data index for the response for generating the responses it will not go and uh, get the information from the pre-trained data right so here limiting the responses to your data content only and i can now go back here so what is the question i have asked before so can you help me with the hotels in new york this is what the question i have asked and i got this answer previously now see what I'll get now. So let me clear the chat. And I'm asking this question. You can see here this time the information is specific to the Margis travel and it clearly says Margis travel offers the following accommodation options in New York as you saw in the New York brochure what they are saying. Right and Manhattan Grand Central and Park Hotel. These are the. These are the three hotels informations you can see here and it is also saying that these informations comes from a. Document saying that this. So if you click on this, it will show you the document here. You can see this is what we got, right? So that means this is the citation. That means it, this information has the retrieved from this particular document. That means it is not just using the pre-trained data. It is generating the response based on the data that I have provided, which means you can give the up to date data as the back end data source. So your model is capable to go and extract the information from the very recent data. Right, so this way you can make the responses more relevant and accurate uh, uh, to the customers, right? So this is what the. RAG process that helps you to use the data uh, uh, which is more recent and organization specific. Now we will take a 10 minutes break and will continue the session after the break.
So now you can go and have a cup of tea or coffee. And after 10 minutes, we'll continue the session. Hi guys, Shetali this side. Uh, till the time we are on break, please get your badge activated. The badge link has been mentioned with the steps in the chat box for you all. Uh, those who have yet to get the badge activated for AI050, please follow the steps and get the badge activated. For the badge activation, you have to create your learn profile. You have to go on Microsoft Learn. Click on the first link which you will get and create your profile. You have to sign in and create your profile. After that, in a new tab, you have to click the URL which has been mentioned in the chat box. Once you click the uh, batch URL, you will get a pop up to get the batch redeem. Click on that redeem button and the batch will reflect on your profile. Under the achievements, you will get your batch with module and courses related to the topic. The batch will uh, somewhat look like this. As it has shown on the screen. Also, you can share it on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter profile. Uh, with the badge, there is icon given to share. share. You just have to click on that share icon and you can share it on your LinkedIn and other profiles. You can also print the batch. After the completion of the webinar or the completion of the uh, topic, the batch will reflect like this. Get the batch activated as it will help you to do the revision of the topic and the modules mentioned in it. And if you're facing any problem related to the redemption, please do let me know in the chat box. Uh, those who have at, uh, attended the yesterday uh, yesterday's webinar, it is the same batch. So no need to worry. You have already uh, activated the batch. 
those who have name those who have not yet activated i am just explaining them how to get this batch activated I hope all the participants are able to get the batch. On the screen, as you can see, my batch has been reflected under my profile in achievements. Also, the completion date has been mentioned as I have come. I have redeemed the batch yesterday. It is showing 20th of December. Also, there is a share icon here. You can see there is a share icon. Through that you can share uh, share the badge on the profiles like LinkedIn, Facebook and other profiles. Also, if I want to print the badge, I will simply click on the print icon. 
and the batch will reflect on my profile like this. I can get a screenshot of it or I can get a print of it. Please note you have to first create your learn account. After that you have to uh, click on the URL which has been mentioned with the steps. The batch URL has been mentioned with this step. You have to click on that and you will get the pop up like redeem. And you have to click on that redeem button and the batch will reflect in a while on your profile. Under the achievement, the batch will reflect. Also, I can I will get the modules and learning path for that course. Yeah, you can see I can get the modules as well as the learning path. Also, those who have missed the uh, First day and day two of Gen AI. Please note uh, we have already shared AI 900 uh, batch and AI 102 batch for the uh, like for the yesterday's and day before yesterday's webinar. The batch will uh, conduct the topics related to the Microsoft Azure AI fundamentals. For AI 900 and for AI 102, it will uh, contain the topic for uh, co topic concepts for designing and implementing a Microsoft Azure AI solution. So, if you are interested to get that batch activated too, the links has been mentioned in the chat box for that batches also. It is the same procedure as it is for AI 050. You have to follow the same procedure to get all the batches activated. Hello Chaitali, can we continue the session? Oh uh, yes, yes, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. So we have seen how we can use the custom data in our large language models to provide the relevant organization specific up to date informations uh, to the customers who is consuming the large language models 
in the business applications. Now let's understand what are the use cases or where the generative AI is used in business applications. If you see, we can use this uh, generative AI in uh, different domains, in the different industries for various purposes. Some of the organizations are using the generative AI in their applications and services for better customer experience or retention. Most of the organizations are using the generative AI for the better customer experience. As per the Gartner report, you can see 38 percentage of the organizations are 38 percentage of the generative AI uh, implementations are for improving the customer experience. And organizations also focus on the revenue growth. And for revenue growth, you can see 26 percentage of uh, the generative AI initiatives are for revenue growth. Some of the startup organizations, some of the startups or the existing uh, large organizations started using generative AI for better revenue. Cost optimization, you can see 17 percentage for reducing the cost in different areas by automating the things using the AI. They can reduce the cost. And you can also reduce the cost in uh, development and testing, creating the synthetic data. With the help of generative AI, you will be able to save cost and time. So organizations are using generative AI for cost optimization also. Business continuity, you can you see 7 percentage and none of the above uh, uh, point because maybe because of the customer's uh, requirement or vendor requirement or maybe because of some other aspects, they are using the generative AI uh, in their uh, applications and services. Which of the industries are most impacted by generative AI? If you see, generative AI is now applicable and also used in different areas already. But if you see going forward, different uh, industries will start using the generative AI technologies to improve the customer experience or to optimize the cost or to make better revenue, as we saw uh, in the previous slide, for improving the uh, customer experience or reducing the cost and uh, uh, for better earnings, they may start use uh, generative AI in their applications and services. And you can see the areas like a pharmaceutical, manufacturing, media, uh, architecture, interior design, engineering, automotive, aerospace, defense, medical, electronics, and energy industries by augmenting core processes with AI models. So they use generative AIs for uh, their internal uh, uh, activities, day-to-day -day activities they can use so that they can do things better and reduce the cost. For example, uh, interior design. So you can generate the designs or models using the generative AI before actually 
implementing it or before actually creating a working model or before actually designing it. So through the generative AI, you will be able to design the models, styles for the designers. In healthcare industry or in medical field, you will be able to use generative AI for uh, creating new medicines, the drugs, inventions, because these generative AI can be used to analyze different uh, molecules and their combinations and how they react each other and their usage all can be uh, augmented and it is possible uh, not only in the medical field but also in other areas uh, like healthcare uh, even uh, engineering field we use the generative ai techniques in media already we are using it like if you see uh, the classic movies which is at least uh, around 30 40 or 50 years back they have filmed in normal films or tapes and they may not have better quality or they may not have good sound quality what you can do using the generative ai methods you can uh, uh, create high resolution videos from those existing videos means the existing poor quality videos you can convert into higher quality videos and you you may you must have already seen some of the movies are re-releasing with the higher qualities the older movies which is released 25 years or 35 years back they are now re-releasing with the 4k quality or dolby sound systems or maybe uh, some better features it's all because of the generative ai because they are capable to uh, generate new things or update the existing data into the next level so you can also see some of the uh, uh, video files will be missing or video frames will be missing and they may use uh, they may lose the continuity of the uh, video using the generative ai you can generate the intermediate frames so that it will be able to uh, create those missing part of this video these all happening in today's uh, movie creation and media field there they are recreating those classic movies with a higher quality using the artificial intelligence it will impact marketing design corporate uh, uh, communications and training and software engineering by augmenting the uh, supporting process that span many organizations organizations already started using ai in marketing for generating the marketing campaign banners taglines advertisements and so on we can also use it to design a very simple example we can see in if you go to the powerpoint presentations you can put some images or text inside it and there is an option called a designer when you go to the designer the powerpoint will design the power, the current slide and give you different styles you can choose one of the style and it's one interesting thing is if you use a, a word like healthcare or maybe uh, uh, medicine or something like that it will try to include the pictures of medicines or some of the healthcare related uh, images in that powerpoint slide 
So that means the artificial intelligence is used to understand what is the content of the presentation slide and then it is designing the slide accordingly which means if i go and add some uh, slide contents which is only a text slide content that is talking about the medicines and i can go to the presentations design section it will automatically design or include uh, uh, the pictures of medicines or something related to that and make the slide more attractive. So how it is happening because the AI is understanding the text content from the slide, understanding the key characters or key st statements and based on that it is either generating the pictures or it is extracting some pictures from internet and putting it here. Right, so that means in our day to day applications, we already started using generative AI techniques. Corporate communications, we can use it for automated mails or uh, sending the automated mails based on some events all you can do I means the mail contents or mail body can be uh, drafted using the uh, generative ai so all these using the uh, features of generative ai to build the contents If you see, we can uh, use the <coughs> generative AI for personalized customer experiences. As we saw, generative AI can play a pivotal role by analyzing vast customer data to help business leaders understand preferences, behaviors, and trends. So you must have noticed that whenever we go to applications uh, like uh, share marketing applications based on the uh, shares that you already hold it can suggest some shares or it can uh, uh, provide you some insight about the uh, highly demanding or highly available uh, shares so that you can go and invest on that so based on your previous data or previous experience, it is providing some suggestions. With this knowledge, companies can dynamically generate personalized recommendations, targeted advertisements and tailored experiences, ultimately fostering more robust customer engagement and loyalty. As, we, as I have told, it is uh, used for providing personalized recommendations and targeted advertisements. So if you so you must be uh, noticed that today if you are talking about uh, uh, some particular product, maybe you want to buy a car. And you you are chatting with your friend. Uh, that I want to buy a car, which car is better and so on. So. After a few minutes whenever you open your mobile and you go to some uh, social media application or uh, the the e-commerce applications it will start popping up the car related advertisements that this car is better or that car is better it's the google's adsense which capture your uh, uh, audio or you are whatever you are doing in the Google search and based on that it is generating the recommendation right so these are these all are personalized recommendations or suggestions and they use uh, AI concepts for uh, creating this customer experience generative AI is commonly used to develop virtual assistants and chatbots that can interact 
autonomously with customers handle inquiries and provide support as i have shown in the previous uh, demo we can create chatbots that provide organization specific information so that the customers will get a feel that they are conversing with a person who has a knowledge about the organization and it can provide the up to date information right so that is another way to uh, increase the customer experience another thing is streamlining the operations and efficiency in organizations we use generative ai that can be that can drive the operational efficiencies by automating time consuming and repetitive tasks the repetitive task and time consuming task can be automated mostly now organizations already started using some uh, monitoring tools or automatic recovery services that is driven by ai so whenever it identifies some anomalies or some fluctuations it will automatically start triggering the recovery services or it will start back back up the data so from generating automated reports and optimizing supply chain management to predictive maintenance and anomaly detection businesses can leverage generative ai to streamline the operations reduce cost and improve overall efficiency as i have mentioned applications like uh, monitoring services disaster recovery services instead of uh, uh, the user manually go and operate these things they can proactively do things like whenever it detect some anomalies or whenever it detect some issues in the uh, system it can do automatic uh, invocation of the services for example ansible light speed will help the developers to create the ansible playbook automations more efficiently using generative ai with ibm watson code assistant enhancing decision making generative ai can be a valuable tool for data driven decision making and businesses can generate alternative scenarios test hypothesis and make predictions by leveraging historical data and running simulations we usually take decisions whenever some situation comes we take manually uh, we decide to execute something but instead of that we can use ai to take decisions on certain scenarios like if plan a is not working the plan b has to execute if we have to test the scenarios we can simulate the test environment by using the generative ai the generative ai can analyze vast amount of data identify the patterns and generate forecast or simulations to aid in decision making process so we use the uh, ai technologies to analyze the historical data and generate the reports based on that and then we can take decisions based on that so it can give the recommendations okay based on the analysis this may happen and you can do these things so these suggestions can help the uh, organizations to take a decision on a particular scenario for example uh, automated predicts energy demand for manu manufacturers and identifies optimized ways to run energy consuming machines on the production floor to reduce the cost 
that means you can predict how much energy will be consumed in a particular scenario and you can optimize the energy consumption by the uh, suggestions provided by the ai models so because of these reasons the energy consumption may increase and you can take this precautions to reduce the energy consumption so those suggestions can come from the ai models preserving privacy and security data privacy and security are critical for all businesses especially those in the areas of healthcare and finance because in our day to day life we are handling or we are dealing with a different uh, data that includes our personal and sensitive data including the mobile number uh, email the pin numbers credit card numbers and so on and securely handling this data is very important generative ai offers a privacy preserving approach by generating synthetic data that maintains the statistical properties of the original data set while ensuring individual privacy so that means using generative ai you don't need to expose your uh, uh, original data instead of that the generative ai can go and create some synthetic data that will have the similar properties of the original data set so that means you can protect or save the data without exposing it and the generative ai will be able to generate some synthetic data that will have similar statistical properties of the original data set this approach enables data sharing and collaboration while safeguarding sensitive information one simple example is not exactly ai but yes similar thing is now you can see uh, sharing the aadhar is uh, very dangerous so instead of sharing the aadhar there is now a concept called virtual aadhar it means it will have the same details of uh, aadhar or a, a person's original aadhar but it will be a virtual aadhar that will be hiding some sensitive informations from that uh, from uh, from from that uh, aadhar that means it's not going to expose everything related to that person so instead of sharing the original aadhar details you can now share a synthetic one that is a virtual aadhar right so that means uh uh it's it's provide the similar information but not exactly same that means it's not going to expose all the data so similar way that's an example i said similar way instead of exposing the actual informations you can also use the generated informations these generated informations will be created by generative ai some of the use cases of generative ai we can see that uh, ai is helping a different uh, uh, helping means it is used in different uh, domains or different uh, 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 industries as we have seen previously in uh, engineering automobile aerospace healthcare every field now we are using the uh, artificial intelligence and we are using it for different uh, scenarios some of the use cases are for customer service proactive it cyber security automation uh, across multiple industries whether it is a supply chain industry or healthcare or financial application service we use the generative ai in different uh, use cases one example i can say is hr recruitment so how generative ai helps the hr team to make things very easy starting 
with the posting of job positions. It can generate the job descriptions and post about the positions available. And it can find the right resources to the right uh, uh, positions by analyzing their profiles. Categorize the profiles and summarize the skills. So we have to categorize those profiles which is available. Maybe it is using or it is analyzing LinkedIn. And when it goes to LinkedIn and use it as a data source, it can visit the profiles of different uh, users. And based on the skills, they can categorize those profiles and they can even summarize create a summary of the profiles which is available so that the recruiters can easily find out the right person for the right position we can use reg to find the right candidates from the grounding source so if you have selected or if you have a set of profiles already available, we can use RAG to use this profiles as a grounding source and extract information from that and uh, identify the correct resource. Generating skill assessment test suitable for candidates. So based on the user's profile or based on the candidate profile, it can generate assessment test. Simply you can uh, tell the model to create an assessment test for a particular position. So if it is a, for a developer, it can create an assessment test for developer. If it is for managerial post, it can create an assessment test for managers. Or if it is for a database administrator, it can create an assessment test for database administrators. Evaluate the progress and generate the reports. So based on the assessments and the performance, it can create the reports. So it can evaluate the progress and generate the reports. So it will help the HR team to simplify things. Instead of doing things manually, it will automate things with the help of generative AI. IT and network efficiency. Get comprehensive visibility into IT and network environments. Automate routine tasks and help the teams to maintain peak performance and availability across distributed clouds and networks. So as we have discussed, like anomaly detection, as well as uh, security services, like monitoring services, can continuously monitor the health of the services or systems available in the cloud whenever it identifies some anomalies it can take preventive actions or some action that can be used to recover the the, the applications and services automate the test to analyze the network availability generate availability reports so applications availability is an important thing so it can automate the availability test means it can do the ping test very simply i can say as an example it uh, it can do the ping test and generate the reports of those uh, test so that we can analyze or we can understand how this system is available and what are the challenges uh, for the high availability of those systems. Cyber security automation. AI allows security operations teams to identify behavioral patterns among bad actors, enabling them to respond faster and even proactively to cyber threats. So whenever some, uh, what to say, uh, 
uh, kind of uh, behavior we see, which is not uh, normal, maybe a no login attempt to the security systems or login attempt to the accounts, which is not uh, a normal behavior. It can take some preventive actions and secure the accounts. The AI solutions can identify shadow data, monitor for abnormalities in data access and alert cybersecurity professionals about potential threats by anyone accessing the data or sensitive information. The AI powered risk analysis can produce incident summaries for high fidelity alerts and automate incident re responses. So that means whenever some uh, risky attempts uh, found or some kind of uh, spams or maybe cyber attacks is recognized, it can take some preventive actions to protect the accounts or protect the networks and create a summary of that to uh, generate a report and uh, take preventive actions for the future. So in future it should not happen. So it can use this report which is generated by the AI to, to take the preventive actions. Customer service automation. Chatbots and virtual assistants like the large language models can power sophisticated chatbots and virtual assistants that provide human like interactions because organizations are now using virtual assistants to help the customers. So whenever the customer need an assistant, they use virtual assistant. They can provide supports 24 by 7, right? And they uh, exactly work like a human so that the user feels that he is interacting with a human. So chatbots and virtual assistants can be developed or backed by the generative AI systems which can even handle the queries which is out of the context because generative AI systems are capable to handle the queries from different domains because normal uh, AI chatbots are capable to provide solutions or responses only to specific field. But if you incorporate the generative AI, it will be able to handle the queries which is coming out of this context. Email uh, and social media responses. We can automate the responses to customer emails and uh, social media inquiries by using the generative AI. So usually uh, customers will make a request for uh, support using email. Using the generative AI, we can read the email content and understand what is the response or what is the support the customer is expecting and create and send the email automatically. So there is no human intervention required. The generative AI can understand what is a, a customer email contains or what is a, a request he is making through the email and it can generate the response accordingly and return send an email back to the user automatically. The LLMs are getting used to write emails by many for different purposes, including sales and marketing. So we can use the same scenario or same approach for sales and marketing where the marketing inquiries or sales related inquiries coming. We can automate the mails response using the generative AI. So you don't need to go and draft the mails manually. Generative AI can create and send the mails automatically. 
content creation and curation automated journalism and article writing the large language models can generate news articles blog post and other written content quickly and efficiently so now we just need to give a thread or information maybe we can give a very large uh, content or report about the uh, news incident and we can tell the model to summarize this in 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 shorter statements like maybe in 10 20 statements we have to summarize it and because we have to publish this because the report news report may contains multiple pages and we have to summarize this very in very short statements uh, so that we can use generative ais for doing that they can also be used to curate and summarize the content from various sources in the creative domain large language models can assist in generating the ideas dialogues or even entire plots of stories scripts and advertising copy so we can use this large language models to write the dialogue so what we have to do we have to tell the model that this is the situation write the dialogues for that particular situation or we can tell the model to write a story based on a particular incident right or we can tell the uh, model to write the script for the complete story so we can do uh, using this uh, generative ai for uh, creative writing language translation and localization multilingual translation large language models can provide high quality translations across multiple languages facilitating communication in global businesses so if you see organizations will be uh, drafting the policies maybe if you consider an mnc multinational companies they operate in different uh, countries different regions they will have a set of policies which is written in english but when it goes to a, a different region, they may need to translate this organization's policies and principles into the local language. We can use the large language models to translate this uh, policies and principles to a different language, maybe one or more languages. It is helping the organizations to automate the translation process. So whenever any content, whether it is a website content or the organization's policies, we can easily convert that into different languages and publish. So uh, one main problem the developers, application developers facing is to localize the resources because localization means the website content need to be translated into different languages so they have to generate the translated content in different languages and then only they can publish this in the website so now using this generative ai models we can translate this in into multiple languages very quickly education and research tutoring and educational tools now you can see there are many uh, educational tools available that is ai driven a virtual assistant or virtual tutor will be available to teach you that means uh, there is no human required to provide the training a virtual assistant can do the training so if you uh, see the movie robot which is in, in which the robot is supporting the uh, uh, the the uh, actress for passing the exam so it is providing support it is teaching 
so that means the large language models can act as a virtual assistant or virtual tutor for providing support for the students and it can easily provide the descriptions explanations and even in uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, complex formulas or mathematical calculations something so they can explain these things in very simple steps like a teacher so in in the absence of uh, a teacher also the students can go and learn things so you can ask the model can you explain this step by step so if you if there is a formula mathematical formula which you cannot understand you can tell the ai model to explain that in simple statements and the model will be able to explain that in step by step it is also useful for people who do the research because now those who are doing the research needs to refer different documents different uh, libraries to get the information about a particular topic now the large language models can help them to get the informations very quickly data analysis and business intelligence we can use the large language models for sentiment analysis for like a customer feedback identification you can also see uh, uh it's already implemented in many websites like uh, flipkart if you see whenever you go to a particular product and see the reviews there is an option uh saying that show the positive reviews or negative reviews so how the website is understanding or how the system is understanding that the customer feedback is a positive feedback or a negative feedback it can use the artificial intelligence sentiment analysis feature to identify whether the given feedback is a positive feedback or a negative feedback so that the movie reviews product reviews all can be easily categorized as positive or negative reviews business reports and market analysis llms can synthesize vast amount of data into coherent and insightful business reports market analysis and executive summaries so you can easily generate the reports and market analysis using the generative ai models means large language models in healthcare we can use it for drug discovery that is llms can help in drug discovery by generating new molecules and can be used as drugs so and also you can use it for predicting the patient's risk like now the doctors are uh very scared to inject the medicines because they cannot predict how the medicine will react in the patient's body so if we inject a particular medicine into the body how the, how it will react we can predict that using the large language models because using the trained data set which has similar uh, diseases similar health conditions similar medicines they have tried in many patients and based on that reports it can predict that if you use this medicine in this particular body it may react in this particular way so easily the doctors can take precautions for the reactions of those medicines whenever they inject those medicines media and entertainment also we are using the generative ai we have already discussed that we can upscale the quality of the vintage movies which has low quality up to 
4K. So we can upscale the qualities up to 4K uh, for those older movies. We can even generate the anim uh, animation models. Suppose if you want to create a 2D or 3D animation, the animation characters can be modeled using the generative AI. Video games companies, the companies who produce video games, they can design the uh, gaming characters using generative AI. Audio synthesis, that is create audio for animated characters, means instead of dubbing the uh, dubbing for the animated characters, so we can tell the generative AI to produce uh, audio based on the script. Generate background sounds for the scenes, narrations, etc. We use this in finance uh, domain also that for fraud detections like automated fraud detection help to locate malicious and suspicious actions also detect illegal transactions so using the ai we can uh, detect the fraudulent transactions and fraudulent activities and take precautions for that Trend evaluations identify the trend in the stock and investments. So as we have already discussed, lots of applications and services available nowadays in the market that uh, can provide suggestions on stocks and investments. Software and data. So you can use the generative AI models to generate the code. So using uh, these code generation tools, you can simply generate the code. Uh, you can either use the code as it is or with some minor changes, you can use this code. Since these are AI generated code, this will be optimized to codes. So sometimes we are confused whether the code we have written is uh, correct or not. So you don't need to worry about that. You can either evaluate this existing code with generative AI, or you can generate the optimized code uh, using generative AI. Even test cases can be created with generative AI. So because for uh, doing the test, you need a large amount of test data. So all these test data can be generated using the generative AI. Some of the examples, as you can see here, we we are telling the chat GPT to create a Python code uh, to list the prime numbers that are less than 1000. So it's just writing the Python code and returns. Similarly, we can uh, tell, we can provide a function, we can copy the code and give it as an input and tell the model to find the bugs in the given function. So it will give the report by analyzing the code and it tells that okay, in this particular code or in this particular line, there is a bug. We can use it for data analysis, find correlations in the above data set. So you can upload a file a, maybe a data set file and you can say find the correlations in the above data set so the model will be able to produce it some other areas where we are using or some other use cases of gen ai uh, it's in supply chain management for demand forecasting inventory optimization sales marketing we are using customer segmentation and personalized marketing campaign fraud detection and risk management area for real time monitoring of transactions and risk assessment and mitigation health and safety compliance for automated compliance checks and safety risk assessment and like this you can see there are lot of applications or areas where we can use gen ai but whenever we use generative ai 
there are there is also risk associated with that whenever we use generative ai what are the different risk or what are the risk associated with that so you were recently you must have uh, uh, seen uh, there is a problem with a deep fake video about an actress the actual video is different but the viral video is an ai created video it's a deep fake video so the problem is it will it is very difficult to identify whether it is a real or fake in older days it is very easy because it is just a cut cut copy paste kind of one which is easy to identify but now the ai models are so intelligent and creative which can produce human faces or which can edit images and videos which is very very difficult to identify using this generative ai technologies we can create deep fakes or copies of products and generate artifacts to su support increasingly complex scams so similar data sets we can generate with the help of generative ai and we can use it for scam chat gpt and the other tools like it are trained on large amount of publicly available data as i as we have discussed these models like a chat gpt or similar uh, 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 generative ai models they are pre trained models and the, they are trained with the data which is available in the internet and they are not designed to be compliant with the general data protection regulation and other copyright laws so gdpr is they are not gdpr compliant so it's a publicly available data which is sensitive which is non sensitive or which is uh, 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 copyrighted or which is not copyrighted so that is not going to dis, uh, uh, discriminate so it's very difficult to identify that lack of transparency is another risk is you see generative ai models are unpredictable and not even the companies who creates this generative ai models they may not be aware how this is producing the data on what basis it is producing the data because it is trained with some models and based on the data which it is uh, used for training it is producing the data but how on or what basis it is producing the new result it's very difficult to get accuracy generative ai systems sometimes produce inaccurate and fabricated answers because whenever you use uh, any generative ai systems to produce the data or code below they will give a uh, indication that this is an ai generated code use it with uh, uh cautious because it is it may not be accurate so you have to be very careful while using those code so you have to assess all outputs for accuracy appropriateness before relying on or publicly distributing information so you you don't need to go and generate the data and publish this uh, data or uh, use the data in your applications before that you have to verify or assess those responses generated by the generative ai because they are fabricated data they may be uh, inaccurate okay so you have to be careful bias is another risk because it need the policies or controls in place to detect biased outputs and how to deal with them because sometimes it may produce results 
which, which may be biased, but according to the responsible AI, it should not happen. And organizations like uh, OpenAI or Microsoft or AWS, they are taking care of the uh, uh, responsible AI principles. So one of the responsible AI principle which talks about bias, that means the AI system should not be biased. Cybersecurity and fraud enterprise must prepare for malicious actors. Use of generative AI system for cyber and fraud attacks such as those that use deep fakes for social engineering of personal and ensure mitigating controls and put in place. Means easily we can create deep fakes and uh, crack the security systems because now we can easily generate the faces and using that faces we can even log into the security systems as a different user, right? So I can create a face of a different person and log into the security systems. So that is a risk. The ethical considerations of generative AI, if you see potential uh, for misuse, that means uh, that we have already discussed uh, fake news, fa deep fakes and manipulations are there. Bias amplification in training data and outputs. Transparency and explainability challenges. So what is transparency? We have already discussed. So how it is generating the results on what basis it is generating the results. It should be transparent and they are responsible to explain how it is doing this. The role of human oversight and responsible AI development. So for every application development, even we are using the AI for automation, a human oversight is or human intervention is uh, important to assess whether things are correct or not. So that's the end of the session. And uh, now if you have any questions or queries, you can post that questions in the chat section or in the Q&A section. Uh, thank you so, so uh, thank you so much sonu sir for the session uh, guys uh, we are open for the questions if you have any questions and doubt uh, please put it in the chat box I repeat, uh, we are about to wind up the session. If you have any doubt questions uh, related to the topic which we have covered today, please put the questions in the chat box. Sonu sir is there to help you out with your queries. Also, guys, uh, before dropping out, uh, I have sh please note I have shared the feedback form in the chat box for today's session. Please uh, share your feedbacks. I have dropped the feedback form link in the chat box, so make sure you submit the feedback form.
Uh, Swanan, we have already shared the batch URL uh, for AI050 in the chat window. Please go and check the URL. It is the same which we have shared yesterday. So if you have activated the batch yesterday, uh, it will be the same code. So need, no need to activate it again. But those who have yet to activate the batch, they have to follow the steps and get that batch activated. Also, I have shared uh, the batch for AI 900. Uh, Microsoft Azure AI Fundamental and for the batch AI 102. Designing and implementing a Microsoft Azure AI solution. All three. The chat box for you all. Guys, get your batch activated as it contains all the topics, modules related to this Gen AI series for all four days. Uh, Hitesh, my team is working on the recordings. We'll definitely share the recordings with all the participants. Do those who have attended the webinar will provide you the recordings as well. Please give it little time. Guys, if you have any questions or doubt, please put it in the chat box. Other details regarding the exam voucher, discounted exam voucher and the training has been mentioned in the chat box for you all. Also, the social media platform links and community links has been mentioned. Uh, yes, those who have uh, redeemed the act activated the batch, they can leave. Also, make sure you submit the feedback form before dropping out. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow on the same time for the last uh, webinar of this series. The topic is on generative AI with Azure Open AI services and beyond. If you are yet to register for this uh, webinar, you can go and register yourself. Please note this is the last webinar for tomorrow in this Gen AI series. The registration link has been mentioned in the chat box. And the timings will remain the same. 4 p.m. to 8 p.m.
Uh, guys, those who have submitted the feedback form can drop off. I hope participants are submitting the feedback form. We are waiting for you to submit the feedback form. The feedback form link has been mentioned in the chat box for you all. Also other details has been mentioned. And guys, if you have any questions or doubt, Sonu sir is there to help you out. Just put your questions in the chat box.
Uh, guys, we'll wait uh, for four, four, five minutes more. Please uh, submit the feedback form. Uh, yes, guys, we are waiting for you all to submit the feedback form. Also, those who have submitted the feedback form, they can drop out. Uh, we will meet you tomorrow at the same time with the last webinar of this Gen AI series on generative AI with Azure Open AI services and beyond. The topic details and the registration link is there in the chat box and the registrations are still open if you are interested to register yourself for that webinar you all can go and register yourself and those who have submitted the feedback form they can drop out thank you so much guys